We've got a big problem. The hitch has gotten progressively worse. It's cracked some of the unibody over here, which is really, really bad. Literally, I couldn't open the door from the outside. I don't think we're going anywhere. Welcome back to the series, Don't Stop Belizing. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, you're greatly appreciated. We're in Bacalar, back in Mexico now. No longer in Belize. This is like a really cool little town. Are you excited? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Me too. Let's get this day started. really warm and there's not a cloud in the sky. I don't think we could ask for a better day right now. I think I might play some frisbee with Frank. Let him burn off a little bit of energy. Okay. Yeah, fine. <laughs> what happened? I was just trying to get a shot. <laughs> the doc ran into me. We were trying to get an epic frisbee shot, and Frank jumped and caught the frisbee and collided with the camera at like Mach 3 <laughs> and like slammed the camera into Allie's arm. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, look at it. <laughs> There's nothing there. I'm sorry. Are you okay? <laughs> Yeah. Anything for the shot, huh? <laughs> I can't make a fist. It just it surprised me, you know. Yeah, I could tell it surprised <laughs> you. <laughs> I wish we had a camera shot from my angle. <laughs> Not only did Frank just like launch directly into Allie, but it literally sounded like a baseball bat <laughs> hitting the camera, and Allie and the camera and the dog all flew backwards. Like just, it's like you got ran over by a linebacker. <laughs> Frank's pretty solid, so I'm sure that hurt. <laughs> you even know what you did? He doesn't even care. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. I'm gonna make some breakfast really fast. Cucina Trent. Now we shall eat. Muchas gracias. Buen provecho. Buen provecho. We're gonna hurry up and eat this delicious breakfast and then we're gonna go fill up our water so that we can do these stinking dishes. Hopefully uh, Frank crashing into the camera didn't damage it. It seems to be okay. Maybe the mic's broken and you guys know that right now and I don't yet. The lens was actually stuck in one position from zooming in to out, it was stuck. I since dislodged it, seems to be Zooming in and zooming out, okay. Hopefully everything's okay, because I really don't want to have to try and figure out the logistics of replacing a lens while in a different country. Let's go get water. Cash for the water? No, I'm gonna need cash, huh? And do you know where we're going? I know where we're going, but okay. we're gonna have to hit an ATM first. Okay. Let's go get money. I would never do this in America, but I'm straight up parked on the sidewalk right now. Seven pesos for five gallons. That's disgustingly cheap. I can't even explain how cheap that is. It's like 30 cents a gallon or something. As you guys have probably seen in some of the previous episodes, we have the water pump that pumps out of the five gallon jugs into the 33 gallon tank. It takes maybe 20 minutes to fill it up between filling up here and filling up here into the tank. It's kind of a painful process. 
We're just really hoping that no cops drive by and try to give us a ticket for parking here while we're doing this. It's either that or park more than like two blocks away and walk every jug back and forth. And I am not trying to do that right now. So we're gonna take our chances. Well, luckily no police rolled by while we were filling up the water. So no ticket, but the owner came out and was very fascinated with my little water pump setup that we've got going on. So I had a little chat with him topped off the water. Allie's gonna continue to bang out a little bit more editing. Now we've got a full water tank and it's really hot and humid, so I'm gonna whip up some smoothies. We've got pineapple, we've got mango, we've got apples. I think just a pineapple mango apple will do today. I'm just gonna get these little black, or the little brown circle guys in the pineapple, and I don't know how to get them out other than just like cut them out. If anybody's got any tips for me, let me know, because I hate these little things. They always get into the smoothie and make it gross. Ain't nobody got time for that. Throw some nice ice. Nice ice in there. This is one of the big benefits of having a freezer in your van, is that you get to have ice. So when it's cold, you can make cold smoothies, you can have ice water, gotta have ice. And voila. Oh wow, good job. Cold, crisp, refreshing, not too sweet, no chunks. Good job. I don't like chunks. It came out really well actually. It's like a perfect consistency and it's like the perfectly amount of chilled. Bueno. Bueno. As you've seen in our previous vlogs, Trent is really excited about finding all the ancient ruins from previous civilizations that exist all over these Central American countries. Another really cool feature are the cenotes. So I guess we're gonna go check out the Azul Cenote, which is a pool that's blue. We're gonna go check it out. I know there's a bunch around here, but this one's really close by, so let's go see what it's all about. All right, you stay, you're a good boy. We were just packing up to get out of here. We got the motorcycle off the hitch. We were just warming up the bike, getting ready to go, and I asked Trent to grab the helmets out of the back. We got a big problem. The hitch has gotten progressively worse. It's cracked some of the unibody over here, which is really, really bad. As you can see, the bumper cover is like torn and completely separated itself. So when I went to open the door for the helmets, this door was closed. I'm not gonna close it all the way, but this door was closed. Now, there's a lot of pressure from the hitch. It's caused the doors to have a lot of tension on this latch in the middle. And when I went to pull the door handle to release this tension, the rod that actuates the door closure from this handle broke. I can tell by the fact that there's no tension on there. So literally I couldn't open the door from the outside with a butter knife from the inside. I popped the two latches open and was able to get the doors open. But basically I think I'm going to have to take the bike rack and this hitch receiver off and try to like use a jack to straighten out this door frame and get everything back in place. I don't think we're going anywhere. Today's timeline just got significantly revised. Hopefully we can make something positive happen here. Driving for long distances with lots of bumps with the bike on the rack has just basically destroyed this, this cross beam back here. It's just, it's too heavy by itself. Even just has enough leverage and that point is so weak now that Anything hanging on there is just going to cause problems. I've had better days. I got to this little access panel where you can see these cables and rods that connect to the door handle. This blue cable in here basically popped out of its little holder so that when you would pull on the handle, it wasn't actually applying any pressure, but I actually fidgeted it back into the holder. Oh my goodness. Now it looks like it's working again. So wow. that is amazing. This is a perfect example. Always keeping your head up. I could have broke down in tears and freaked out and been super upset that everything was bent and broken and then now the door handle was broken. But instead, you keep a level head, you find the problem, you fix it, you're in a better mood every time. Gotta keep your head up, people. Just catching up, bottom watch. 
catching it all. Oh, I feel how nice that is. Is it really sealing? Huh? Is it yeah, sealing? Yeah, it's like perfect now. Let's just we'll not just, use the rack anymore. We'll just have to ride the motorcycle and yeah. the van everywhere from now on. Yeah. Let's put the straps away and the rack under the van for now. Well, I'm just going to chain the van, the rack to the van. Okay, and then let's just go take a ride on the bike and find some water to swim in. Yeah, that's a good idea. Definitely not the day we were expecting it to be, but we're going to make the most of it. We might not find that cenote, but we are going to find some refreshing, cool water to take a dip in, take our mind off of what's going on right here. You look like you're loving life. Oh, it's so hot, especially in the sun. Let's throw these helmets on and go for a ride. Laguna. Laguna? Dice Bacala Centro, para abajo. ¿Es público? Sí. ¿Gratis? Sí, gratis. Okay. Puede, vis 154. Puede visitar el cenote azul igual. ¿Sí? Dos kilómetros y medio. Ahí lo va a ver, cenote grande. Ok, muchas gracias. Dale. Dale el buen día. Vale, gracias. Gracias. Wow. There's definitely people down there. Maybe. Maybe. Let's do it, baby. Azul Cenote. We're in it right now. It's crazy, this is like right off the side of the road and it's pretty hidden and there's really no one here. And it's beautiful. <laughs> what a great day. Yeah, this is seriously amazing. And you can tell that it's like extremely deep. Yeah. Did you already tell them what they are? Cenotes are these amazing underground wells, kind of like deep, deep pools that are connected to the sea through underground tunnels. They used to be used in a lot of Maya rituals and sacrificial offerings, but they're also just really beautiful. The limestone bedrock erodes and causes a sinkhole and it fills with water, whether it be from a nearby lake or from the ocean or whatever it is. They're just these huge, really deep holes. And this one's really cool because right at the very edge, it just goes straight down. And you can tell like by the color and the temperature and everything. It's, it's amazing in here. <laughs> the best possible turn of events for what's been going on today. <laughs> yeah. We needed this. I think we're gonna swim a bit more, enjoy this a little bit, and then take a nice relaxed ride back to the van. 
Hakuna Matata. Not worry about our problem. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe we'll even go out for dinner. Definitely. Definitely one of those days. <laughs> we made it back to the van. It's not that, oh, well, it's six o'clock. I guess it's dinner time. I was gonna say, we're pretty hungry. I think at this point, the day took a turn for the worse and then it took a turn for the better. And now we're just kind of rolling with it. Apparently, Mercury is in serious retrograde. I'm not a super follower of what that all entails, but I know it's bad. So, I don't know if we can blame our misfortune on Mercury being in retrograde, but we're gonna leverage that to go out for dinner. And I think we're gonna go try out this vegan spot here in town that's supposed to be all that in a bag of potato chips. It's called Mango E Chili. Was delicious we had a nice little vegan meal here some uh, pumpkin seed and pineapple hamburgers and amazing chocolate banana peanut butter milkshakes which I loved it's a nice ending to the day but I think this is probably where we're gonna let you guys go like the video share the video subscribe to both channels click that notification bell so you are notified when new videos come out and we'll talk to you tomorrow good night guys see you guys on the next one bye